uh, wonderful acts toward the Son of Man. And today also, we just like to say uh, happy birthday to my oldest daughter. Amen. We thank and praise God for her, Tori. Amen. She's up there in Boo and Merlin. And we say happy birthday to you. And may you have many, many more. And in the word of God, we don't want to lose any time. Because no, time is precious. You know, time is going by so fast. The years just rolls around like the months. And months become weeks. And weeks become days. And hours become minutes. And we know that the Lord is soon to come. The Lord is soon to come. But who will be ready for that great day? You see, we're having our day now. But after a while, it's going to be the day of the Lord, and the Lord is coming. And the Bible said, will he find faith on this earth when he returns? But we just want to let you know that God loves you. Amen. He loves you today. And we want to go before the Lord in a word of prayer because we know that prayer changes this thing. Our Heavenly Father, in your precious name, we thank you right now for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your kindness that you showed upon us this day. For this is the day that the Lord has made. We want to rejoice. We want to be glad in it, in your precious name. We ask you if thou would look in on our people this evening to remember those that are under the sound of our voice this evening. Somebody may be sick in their body. We know that you're able to speak a word of deliverance, speak a word of thy saving grace in your precious name. We ask you also to remember the world situation, those that have rule and authority over this land, bless in a mighty way that they might be able to make a right decision, that we may be able to live a peaceful and a quiet life in this world today. Remember the people, Lord, throughout the land, those that are saved, Lord, those that are calling upon your name, bless them in a mighty way, help them in the mighty name of Jesus. For there are many uh, persecution of the righteous and many troubles, but we know that you're able to deliver us out of all of them. Bless in a mighty way. Help right now. Somebody may be wanting to give up, but help them right now. Give them, uh, God, uh, the strength that they may be able to overcome that which has come into their life. Help them right now, Lord, in the precious name of Jesus. Do these things. Open up our understanding to your word that we may be able to understand the scriptures and say yes to your word. Do these things for us. We praise you. We magnify you. Bless our old seal pastor. Remember him, Lord. Give him peace in these last and evil days. Bless in a mighty way. Remember all the pastors throughout the land. Help right now in Jesus' name. Amen. And in the word of God, in the word of God, or we say off time in the word, uh, we have, we have, we have a hiding place and it's in God's word. And we just thank and praise God for his word today. For it's a lamp unto my feet and a light along my pathway. And in the book of Acts of the Apostles, I said, and I said again, we love the book of Acts of the Apostles. For we know there is, uh, we find the history of the church. How that all uh, started off. How the church, <clears throat> excuse me, got started off. And I was thinking like this. We want to make a right start. You know, because, see, if you don't start off right, then you're going to end up wrong. See, a lot of people think they're not uh, aware of their beginning. But, see, we want to start off right. And when, as I said, when you start off right, you end up right. But if it, just in case you don't start off right, uh, you can always go back. You know, we can always uh, repent and have a change of mind and go back and and do that which we uh, didn't do before. Do it right. Do it the right way. Because you have heard, uh, we said before, concerned about how that David, when he was uh, bringing the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord back to the city of David. You see, the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, it represented the presence of the Almighty God. And everywhere you find the Ark, where uh, Ark of the Covenant of the Lord was, uh, that house uh, was blessed. The people was blessed. And uh, the enemy had came in and had carried it away because of the sin. You see, uh, something happens when we sin. When we sin, uh, God gives us over unto the hands of, our, of the enemy. 
he did that uh, back in the days of the children of Israel. Every time that Israel sinned against God, in other words, when they disobeyed God, he gave them over to the enemy and they came in and they seized them. And on this occasion, they carried away the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. And David, when he uh, became king and he uh, decided that he was going back and he was going to bring the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord back to the city of David. But we'll find out when he was when he started moving the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, he didn't go according to how it was written. You see, there was laws that God had passed down unto Moses concerning about how the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord was supposed to be trans, uh, poor, uh, trans, uh, uh, how it was supposed to be moved, in other words. Amen. Uh, you just couldn't uh, move the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord any kind of way. And see, uh, David, he what he did, you know the story of how that he uh, made a new cart. He felt like if I uh, get something new and make it and move the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord on, it'll be all right with God. You know, a lot of times we uh, seem to get in that same state of mind that uh, long as we can come up with something good, that God is going to go along with this. As long as it sounds good, uh, you know, we feel like God is going to go along with it. But she, uh, but you see, God already had, as I said, he had uh, given Moses the instruction for when they were to move uh, the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. And only the priest was supposed to move uh, hand on the Ark of the Lord. So uh, David, uh, when he first uh, attempted to bring the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord back to the city of David, he was I had it on the cart, and you know the story. We don't have to go through it because this is not what we had on our mind to talk about, but it just came to us because, see, what came to my mind was, see, a lot of time we want to do things the way we see that they ought to be done. Uh, we want to do things in our own way, in our understanding, but you see, uh, salvation is not, uh, de de not dependent upon my understanding. Uh, you see, I have to go by what the scriptures say, what is written. So we find out that after when David was moving the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord and it started to tilt over and one of his servants reached out and he grabbed it and put his hand on it and the Lord slew him. And David was angry. His anger, anger grew against the Lord because the Lord had slew this man. He was, he was just trying to keep the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord from falling over. It, it, it seemed like a thing that anybody would have done. Amen. But you see, and uh, from the beginning, he was doing the right thing, but he was, uh, David was doing the right thing, but he was doing it in the wrong way. And a lot of times that I said, see, we today, uh, we, we might be doing the right thing, but have you ever thought about it? it? It just might be the wrong way. And if we don't do things according to the scriptures, how that, uh, uh, the scripture does what said the Lord, then we'll find ourselves, we'll be out of order. So when David, he left the Ark of Covenant there and he went on back and he had to uh, do, had to rethink this thing. You see, uh, it didn't work the way he was doing it. He was doing it the right thing, but he was doing it the wrong way and it did not work. So he had to go back and rethink this thing all over again. Uh, Sometimes this is what we have to do. Uh, if you uh, find out that uh, the thing's not working like it's supposed to, you have to go back and rethink the thing. But what he did, he found, he looked into God's word. Look at here now. It's a good thing to look into God's word. If you want to be delivered, if you want some salvation, uh, if you want to be saved, if you want to uh, reign with the Lord forever, then we got to look in this word. Hallelujah. You see, we can't just take somebody else's word, what they say. You see, a lot of times people, uh, many people, they go to church and they don't never read the Bible. They don't never study the Bible. We've been had this word with us for a long time. I was thinking like this. You see, the Bible, it's been over 2,000 years. Now we have had the word of God. But you know how that the early church, when they started out, they went out through the land teaching and preaching the word of God and uh and the church was flourished. It was blooming long as the apostles were still alive. But when they died, then the church died out. Amen. And I thought about it like this, how that I believe it, it uh, the time space in between before uh, it was picked back up again, 
It was about uh, 1,700 years. You think about this now. 1,700 years uh, passed that uh, nobody was being baptized and nobody was receiving the Holy Ghost. And, and it didn't happen. It didn't start it again until around the early 1900. But all them years had passed by. But as we get back to David, you see, as we were saying, you see, he had to go back and look into God's word. Hallelujah. Uh, this is what we need to do. We need to uh, look into God's word. As I was saying, uh, don't take it from uh, somebody else. Don't even take it from me. Uh, but the word of God is right. It's right all by itself. But it's good to know the word of God for yourself so that you will know. Your soul is at stake. Uh, I can't gamble with my soul because, you see, the stakes are too high. And I don't get but one chance. So I, I have to look into God's word and find out for myself what must I do to be saved. I'm not going uh, just to depend on your word, on the preacher's word, in other words. Uh, but I want to know the word of God for myself. Amen. Because you see, there's so much out here in this world today. Amen. There's so many people today. Uh, they don't have the revelation. They're doing a good job. Hallelujah. As I said here, when we were talking about uh, David, how that he was moving the ark of the covenant of the Lord, he was doing a good deed. He was doing a good thing. Uh, couldn't nobody do anything better because, you see, he was bringing the ark of the covenant of the Lord back to the city of David, where it was supposed to be. Uh, he was doing the right thing, but he was doing it the wrong way. But as I said, um, David, what David began to do, he went and he looked into God's word. He began to look into what was written. Uh, you see, we have to look into God's word to see what is written. Uh, it's not what I think, but what is written, what is written. Uh, and when he looked at the word of God and he found out, you see, uh, that God had commanded Moses how to move the ark of the covenant of the Lord. And when he saw this, he repented and he went on back down where he left the ark of the covenant of the Lord at. You see, sometimes uh, we leave the Lord. We walk away from him uh, and we find ourselves have to go back uh, to the place. Somebody said, take me back. Uh, Lord God, take me back now to the place where I first met you. Uh, when I first uh, we was introduced to you, when you first uh, came into my heart, you know, I, I, done, I left that space, uh, but now, Lord, take me back. So David found himself, he had to go back. He went back, but you see, this time he had the right thing in mind. Uh, he had gotten the right instruction. You see, we are doing things, but we don't have the right instruction. Anytime I come out of my own mind, uh, I'm going to go the wrong way every time. Amen. But you see, David had looked into God's word. And he had saw what God had given Moses to do concerning about the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. So David went and he got uh, the Levites and I believe he uh, had them to move the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord as it was written. And I believe he brought it on back to the city of David. Uh, but you see, in other words, the reason why we went there to David is to let you know, you see, we got to go by what the words say. It's not what I say, it's not what I feel, it's not what I think, but it's what God's word say for you and I to do in order for you and I to be saved. Because you see, there are some things that we must, excuse me, that we must do in order to be saved. We can't get around them. Amen. We can't go on them and we can't get over them. We can't get around. It's too wide, too high and too low. So we got to do things God's way. God have a way. And somebody said, it's mighty sweet. So we have to look into God's word. This is what we're encouraging you this evening. Amen. That's the way I went. I wasn't going that way. I still going to have a scripture here I wanted to get to. But that was just personal on my mind. Uh, you see, a lot of times uh, people, uh, they're going by their own feelings. I can't go by my feelings. I can't go by what I think is right. I got to go by the word. I got to go by the word of God. Uh, you see, there was a time in life when God winked at people when they did wrong, when they made mistakes like that. Amen. God winked at it, but he's not winking anymore. 
Ah, but you see, God is declaring, amen, holiness out of you and I. So this is what we are talking about. Uh, this is the way I went, amen. Uh, we have to look into God's word. Uh, we have to look into God's word and see what does say the Lord. You see, everything that we need for salvation, everything that a man needs to be saved, to be ready when Jesus comes. As I said before, he's coming back again. He's coming again, amen. And the songwriter said real soon, but will we be ready? Uh, there are many people today uh, that's walking around, they're thinking that they're ready. So many uh, feel like just because I have my name on the church roll, uh, many people today, they feel like they're ready. Uh, but just because I have my name on the church roll and going to church every time the church doors are open, and giving uh, my service unto the Lord, that don't mean that I'm ready. That don't mean that I'm ready at all. Uh, we need to get into God's word. I'll tell you, amen, the days and time we're living in now. Uh, we're living in some critical times, amen. We're living in some times, amen, that uh, people are getting away from the word of God. They're bringing in their own ideals. Uh, there are people that have been on this road for a long time, but they are not convinced, uh, Ah, uh, Lord, help us this evening. We are, uh, many people today, they are not convinced of God's word. Uh, they are, uh, what I could say, I can't get that word out there, ricky wash it. They are uh, tossed about with every wind and doctrine. Uh, they are not sure of the word of God. Amen. We got to believe God. Uh, you see, whatever God has said in his word, uh, we have to believe it. Amen. I believe Mervis said on one occasion he said, whatever the master say, you do it. Amen. But you find today, uh, people, they won't, don't want to do what does say the Lord. They want to do it their way. And a lot of time we find what people are doing today, they are trying to please man. I cannot please man and God. Amen. I got to please the Lord. And the only way that I can please God is I got to go by his word. I got to do what does say the Lord. I got to I look into God's word. I got to put my head down in God's word. Keep it there. Uh, and uh, look and find out what does say the Lord. Amen. Uh, what God got to say about the matter. It's not me. Uh, uh, you go and ask somebody a question and they'll give you some kind of answer. Uh, but I don't want to know what you think about it. I, if I ask you what must I do to be saved, I don't want it to come from your uh, amen. Thinking I want it to come from the word of God. Uh, amen. So that's why I was saying, <coughs> excuse me, we have to uh, look into God's word for ourselves uh, because, see, my soul depends on it. Amen. Uh, we got to know this thing for myself. Amen. I got to know that it's written. Whatever the preacher is preaching, I want to make sure that I know that it's in God's word. If it's not in the word, then I don't have to do it. Anything that comes out of my mouth, if you can't find it in the word of God, then you don't have to do it. Amen. That's coming from man. But whatever is written, amen, we got to find ourselves doing it. Amen. Like I said, in the world today, uh, we're living in men and women. They're, amen, confused. They're not uh, sure of themselves. Amen. Uh, I want to be sure, and the only way that I can be certain, amen, is to do this thing like God have said, amen. Uh, uh, you see, I was, well, amen, look here now. Uh, the scripture that I had today don't look like I'm going to even get to it, but I'll bring it, amen, to you, amen. I was looking at the uh, Acts of the Apostles, I believe I said that, in the, um, amen, 26th uh, chapter of Acts of the Apostles. I was reading here concerning about a man, Paul, when he was, uh, had came, uh, there face, uh, a man, uh, with Agrippa. And we know concerning how, how that Paul, a man, that he had been arrested at this time. And the reason why Paul had been arrested, it was not because that he had did anything wrong. Amen. But he was only preaching Jesus. You see, from the beginning, as I said before, when the church first began, they was preaching the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. You see, Jesus had came into this world, in a sin-cursed world, uh, for one man had put us in sin. But I see Jesus. The Bible said that he was made 
a little bit lower than the angels, that he, by the grace of God, that he was going to taste death for every man. So here we find that in the early church, and when you look in the book of Acts of the Apostles, amen, if you want to get a right start off with God, you need to read the book of Acts of the Apostles. Amen. Every preacher that said that God have called him to preach, he ought to be able to preach the sermon that Peter preached on the day of Pentecost. If you find yourself unable to preach the sermon that Peter preached on the day of Pentecost, then, amen, I said at one time, I said again, you need to sit down somewhere until God give you the revelation. Because, you see, people are depending on you. Let me slow this thing on down. Amen. Like I said before, the, the people don't read God's word and don't study God's word as 